Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3D printer vlog. Right now I want to show you all some new parts that I got in for the printer. Basically I'm going to be upgrading the stepper motor drivers. I forgot the exact model numbers. Uh, I'll go ahead and put them on the screen probably down below. And uh, yep, these are the uh, new stepper motor drivers. They are, they pr provide more amperage and or more current to these stepper motors, thus giving us more torque. So that'll be a nice upgrade, for, especially for our Z-axis, and our extruder may need it as well, as well as X and Y, that'll definitely be good. Plus these aren't, aren't as noisy as the uh, current ones we have in there. Those tend to make some really weird noises. Don't know why, but uh, at least with the uh, current stepper motors I have here, the Kaisons or whatever they're called. And then next is something I probably won't use in this build, but something I just, I wanna experiment with in the future is our, uh, this is like an automatic bed leveling proximity sensor. So it's for automatic uh, bed leveling. So it just goes along different points and it has like a magnetic type sensor. It can work with aluminum beds, but apparently the distance has to be very small, which the uh, glass on the printer bed would interfere with that. So not gonna end up using that, but it was cheap. So I'll use it in a future printer more than likely. Another uh, step promoter driver, which I don't need cause I'm not, uh, not using dual extruders. And then next is a brand new hot end. This is the E3D V6 hot end. It's, uh, the reason I've chosen this one is because it'll allow me to use a lot more exotic materials. Comes disassembled, has the included Bowden tube, which I think will just work with our existing one, which we may need to use just considering the uh, sizing of it here and along with all of its other wiring and whatnot, which hopefully they gave me enough wiring so I don't have to splice too much. Also, I went ahead and got a uh, set of brand new DuPont connectors here. Looking real fancy, all right, so. Yep, these will allow me to make a very clean connector without having to hack apart an existing connector and just make things look a heck of a lot more professional. So that'll be nice. And of course I got some other Ex miscellaneous connectors as well as some pretty cool new tools. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, assemble the E3D V6, just the basic uh, components of it here. Overall, I do have to say I am impressed, highly impressed with the actual uh, build quality of everything here. So it actually gives you two leads, one for the fan looks like, yep. One for the fan and one for the actual uh, temperature sensor, which is a really nice touch. I think I'm gonna have to do some splicing with the fan connectors anyway. That existing ones I have already so and this is like a cool little insulator oh and it does have allen wrenches so I will not need what I have on the side here okay so we have like one clamping bolt for this that'll go here get a grub screw in here just tighten it and about a half turn, go out, and get this mamma jamba, get it tightened in as much as you can. And then you wanna tighten this guy up here. Now the cool thing about this particular hot end is that it can withstand temperatures up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we got ridiculous temperatures going on here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we'll be able to use a lot of crazy exotic filaments, which I hope to do reviews of here in the future, like nylons and carbon fiber composites. There's all sorts of really cool stuff like bronze and copper composite uh, filaments as well. So yeah, there's, I definitely am excited to try out all sorts of weird stuff with this. Yeah, I'll link the, uh, this extruder as well as the, uh, the link to the instruction See thing that I'm using in the description. Now we have this uh, heat sink compound, which I have to apply to this tube here. If everything has been blurry. That is because I forgot to turn on autofocus, derp. Okay, so it's hand tightened on there. Okay, so what you see here is the basic wiring, harness, mess, cluster, whatever you want to call it. What I have to do is I basically have to retrofit everything, so. Just shooting this bit with my phone here, just want to show you that I have the uh, new hot end already installed on the printer. This is just to uh, mock up wiring. So what I'm going to be doing in terms of wiring is I have the small fan lead, and it'll be uh, the same length as, it'll be 
spread up equal length of the uh, big fan lead. It already has a uh, male lead attached to it, so the actual uh, female lead it will be about equal here. And then of course it, along with the end stop connector, will probably will meet along that way. Although I may change that, probably have it up here somewhere. And then the end stop, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some of these male node ends here. So I'm going to break off about three of these bad boys and then just solder it straight onto the board so I don't have to actually worry about any sort of uh, weak solder connections here. I'm gonna go ahead and show the soldering process of this here now. So now what I have to do is I have to go ahead and transfer the existing wire harness that we have from our old uh, hot end to the new one. And first I just need to untangle everything, obviously. These I just have to desolder from the old one. So there we go, all four of our wires here. And I have my solder fume extractor turned on. Wet our tip or prime it a bit. Okay, easy as that. There's one down. Okay, so that's been undone. So now I can go ahead and put away our old hot end. So right now I'm just slicing open the fan connectors as well. What I plan on doing is I wanna just go ahead and create like a multi-connector harness deal. We have our end stop. We have the uh, connector for our actual controllable fan. And then of course we have the small fan. And then of course we have the uh, hot end, the actual heater pipe core, whatever the heck you wanna call it. And then of course the actual temperature sensor. Need to go ahead and extend these bad boys. I'm not gonna worry about the fan. I'm actually going to unplug that lead for now. What's gonna happen is I'm going, is the uh, end stop and the two fan wires. Those are kinda gonna be merged together to save uh, wiring here. Essentially the schematic is, so we have the small fan, which is this guy right here, the big fan, which is the one that'll of course go towards the nozzle. And then of course we have the end stop. So the uh, positive from both fans will be coupled together since they'll be running both on the same 12 volt rail. Then the negative will be controlled independently on the, the big fan. So that will be on its own. And then the negative on the fan will be coupled with the negative of the end stop because those don't need to be controlled. It's the end stop has its own signal cable and this fan runs at a constant speed. Then of course we have the positive on the end stop as a zone because it's a short, it's like a five or smaller or lesser voltage. And then a sensor wire, so that's five wires all together. So now I just need to go ahead and make some sort of wiring harness. I'm gonna start off with the actual hot end cabling. I'm going to snip off this end. That much should be fine. <laughs> There we go, I have the wiring harness completed, have the ends for the fans, the end stops. So we are good to go, everything's nice and cleanly done. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it into the printer here now. So I went ahead and got the wiring routed for the most part. Uh, only issue is, is that this particular in-stop connector 
for the, I believe the X axis right up here. The, it doesn't really reach the electronics box. I'm planning on um, relocating it possibly, shifting it down a little bit here. My only issue is I hope that these in stop cables for uh, these two in stops up here aren't um, too far or aren't constricted enough to where I can't just move this box properly, but yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll see what I need to do to get this accomplished here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work on moving that. Okay, I went ahead and got the wiring harness plumbed up here. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to revise it a bit because I am overall um, revising the actual extruder placement. I'm gonna do a direct drive, so it's going to be attached to this. So I'm gonna print these two new plates over again. I'm actually gonna be using a three-wheel design, much like the Z-axis, which of course has a tensioner as well, so to make things a little bit better, I think there's a three-wheel design for these guys, but I think there's some issues with them, so I'm probably gonna hold off for that for now until I can confirm that they're working. And I'm also going to be getting some proper anti-backlash nuts for these guys here. The, this particular solution is okay. Um, unfortunately, it does not work at all for my particular application. There's still a bit of wobble, and I'm just gonna get a proper one that bolts straight to the frame. That's of course by Open Builds, the same people who do the uh, the wheel bearings or the wheels in these aluminum machined uh, washers and whatnot that I've used for all the wheels on this build here, as well as the framing. So it should just sync up, no problems at all. I think I need to lengthen the in stop wiring. It's just like a few inches too short. Although I might not need to do it because I'm probably going to be attaching the wiring from here since the extruder is not going to be sitting up front and that's this isn't you know plugging in over here so but yeah the main reason i'm doing all of this is because i am going to be printing out more exotic filaments with this printer i don't want any sort of um, weird jamming issues which these bowden setups are uh, really notorious for doing it. Now direct feed setups, of course, the uh, disadvantage of the, is that it's gonna print slower, which isn't gonna be great for huge prints. However, it is going to work. And of course, it's going to be consistent in terms of performance. You're not, we're not gonna get a lot of hysteresis or history, hysteresis or however you wanna pronounce it. That's pretty much gonna be it here. So I'm just waiting on parts, essentially. I got the uh, the new extruder. I'm going to go with E3D's uh, Titan extruder along with their low profile stepper motor. And I'm printing off new pieces as we speak and getting more filament. I'm probably forgetting something here, which I'll probably go over in the next episode or the next few episodes, whatever. Uh, but that is going to be it for now here, folks. Like I said, I'm just waiting on parts and things to print out. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing and check out some other videos in the end card here and have a great day.